thank you for coming to order here. All right. I'm calling the City of Sonora City Council regular meeting to, uh, for Monday, November 18th, 2024 to order. Pledge of Allegiance. Jim, Steve, would you like <laughs> Joe. Joe. <laughs> Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Mayor Sagerstrom. Here. Vice Mayor Cruz. Here. Council Member Levine is absent. Council Member Merrill. Here. Council Member Opie. Here. Uh, it was my understanding that Council Member Levine would come on Zoom, perhaps? No? Okay. Well, if she does. I did yeah. send her the link. So. Okay. Thanks. Um, all right. May I have the report on the agenda posting, please? At 10.58 a.m. on the 15th day of November 2024, the agenda for today's City of Sonora Council meeting was posted in the window of City Hall for public view. Thank you. Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. Okay, we move on to public comment. The public may address the council on any item of public interest not otherwise on the agenda that is within the jurisdiction of the city. No action may be taken. Matters to be addressed may be referred to city staff or placed on a subsequent meeting agenda. Speakers are limited to a three-minute presentation. Good evening, Madam Mayor, City Council, staff, and members of the public. Katie Dunn, President of the Sonora Chamber of Commerce. I uh, just want to give you a quick update on our parade. We have 80 entries, so I'm pretty super happy about that. Um, tomorrow we will be plotting them on the map, and our, I believe our last parade meeting will be on Wednesday. So we're going to be wrapping that up with all of the organizations involved. And then this coming Thursday and Friday, we'll be notifying all the uh, parade participants of their parade number, their staging location, and who they will be following. So that should be wrapped up by the end of the week. So um, go parade time here. It's just right around the corner. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, yes, thank you. Let's just pray for good weather. Um, you may have noticed some of the holiday decorations around downtown. Uh, yesterday and today, our decorating committee for the Christmas um, uh, Town Sonora group decorated the uh, fire museum uh, parking lot. Uh, we did the Caulfield Park, Lineberg. Today we did um, the Opera Hall and the parking lot across from the Opera Hall. Um, and so it's looking very Christmassy out there. Um, and then you probably, I think you all have one, uh, one of these in front of you. This is our rack card. So it's a little map on one side and then all of the events for Christmas Town on the other side. Uh, you can find this also on our website at christmastownsonora.org. It's up and running. And um, also, oh, before I, I end, I also wanted to um, share with you, I got this really lovely note from St. James Episcopal Church, a thank you note for um, the tables that we donated to them from the Opera Hall. So I'll, I'd like to pass this around. And that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah, well, and their church is going to be completely outlined this year. Isn't that? It and is. And lights, right? It is, yes, it is. Thank you. I yeah. do have uh, just one question. Sure. Who, who did the artwork for this? Well, you know, um, the original artwork was done by Judy Stoltenberg. Um, that's a map that the city of Sonora has used for other uh, events in the past, and we just kind of brought it back and threw a little Christmas spin on it and uh, colorized it, and 
Yeah. I just like the personal touch. You, know, you can yeah. tell where all the buildings are. Yeah, isn't it fun? Yeah. In, so yeah, well done. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it takes a village. Welcome. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. Hi, my name is Julie Johnson, and I serve as the resident leader for the Sonora Knolls Dragoon Gulch Firewise community, which formed in 2020. It includes 200 <coughs> residences. Many residents are retired on a fixed low income. Early last week, I was informed by one of my neighbors that the price of curbside green waste pickup by the City Public Works Department has tripled from $40 a load to $125 a load. This increased cost has direct consequences and creates a hardship for residents in our community. Green waste removal is a critical service necessary to creating and maintaining defensible space around our residences. Also, many of our homeowners do not own trucks or trailers to self-haul. The Sonora Knolls Dragoon Gulch Firewise community is part of the Firewise USA program sponsored by the National Fire Protection Association. The purpose of our Firewise community is to work together to reduce the risk of wildfire damage to homes and property by educating residents and creating fensible space. There are now two Firewise communities within the Sonora City limits, Sonora Knolls and Elks Hill. There are a total of 18 Firewise communities in Tuolumne County. And we believe strongly that the more Firewise communities um, can substantially help reduce the risk of catastrophic fire within our city and county. It's critical that the city support and encourage residents to organize and do their part in fire prevention, education, and fuel reduction. In 2023, last year, our Firewise community collectively made investments valued at $200,000. This year, we were hit hard from the April 4th snowstorm. There was a major tree damage, including uprooting and large limb breakage. The cleanup costs were substantial and totaled well over 80000 for this event alone. We are really grateful for the services that we have been receiving from the City Public Works Department with the green waste disposal, including the annual roadside clearing along Spring Hill Drive by the Climate Stewardship Class of Columbia College. This project has been a true partnership between residents, the college, and the city. In summary, the new green waste disposal fee will provide a significant hardship for our residents who are working really hard to create and maintain defensible space. The residents of Sonora Knolls Dragoon Gulch Firewise community are requesting the following. Number one, please be transparent and inclusive in these types of decisions when possible. Number two, work in partnership with the Firewise communities in the city boundary. These communities would like to work with the city by giving resident perspectives, innovative ideas, volunteers, communication, advocacy, et cetera. And three, if we would consider offering a discount on green waste removal to recognized Firewise communities within the city boundary. Thank this, you. This could also serve as an incentive for recruiting more communities. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Louis Mastro. Um, I'm working with the uh, the uh, Sonora business watch group and I am a uh, business owner. I have Sonora Jewelry downtown and I own uh, property there on Washington Street. I own the building that the sportsman's in and the jewelry store's in. I have a couple of things that I want to go over. One of them is uh, the crime that's going on on Washington Street has become a little more advanced. I've been there 23 years and now it seems to be a, a real 
situation that we need to work on. Um, we're trying to get cameras more installed and work with the police department to try to get uh, easier access to videos when crimes are being committed. Um, for instance, like the um, Benjamin Figg's glass was just broken. They had a, and then two weeks before, somebody else's glass were broken. My glass has been broken twice. Um, and, you know, I have access to my buildings. I mean, I would be glad to supply electricity for cameras that we could maybe link into a system. Or if the city could supply maybe the money to pay for a, uh, a cellular line or a, a Wi-Fi line that we could work with being able to monitor what's going on. And uh, I don't believe that the police are doing anything more than just trying to help uh, eliminate some of the crime that's going on and be able to survey what is happening to be able to bring closure to some of these problems that they're having. I don't think having cameras to watch any traffic or anything else was anything in mind of what they were probably trying to do. Um, but that's, I just want to bring that attention. We're working together to try to get some camera situations set up. So that's one, one thing here. And my second thing is, is in my building, behind my building, there's a set of stairs back there. And they are owned by me. And the parking lot has been using them for access from the people parking in the parking lot for, well, the last 23 years since I've been there. And lately, um, in fact, about a week ago, somebody confronted me kind of aggressively that they slipped on the steps because they were icy that one day that we had a little bit of frost and that it was a problem that I could be sued with in different situations. So for two years, I've been trying to get the city, and I can't remember the person I spoke with, but it was a young man about the liability problem that was going on for me. And he seemed to not take any appropriate communication with me to get some, anything figured out. In fact, he stopped uh, communicating with me while he wouldn't return my calls. So the thing I'm getting to here, I want to hand this out if I could for people to take a look at it. And uh, there's enough of them there for people to see. But when I close my stairs and remove my stairs, it's going to be a huge liability problem for the city. They have a parking spot. Time is, is up, sir. Thank you. That is set for is that that was set for um, uh, handicapped, and it's in an illegal spot to start with. It can't be right next to the stairs that are privately owned, and in the furthest spot away from the parking lot that's supposed to have access to the street. So if I close thank my you. stairs, thank huh? You. Your time is up. Oh, there was three minutes. I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. Well, thank you for bringing this to our oh, attention. You. Evening. I would like to take a moment to remember Jim Garcia from Waste Management. I have a sympathy card for his family. Um, if anyone would like to sign it, I thought he was amazing at Waste Management. And he actually brought Waste Management and their trucks, his brand new trucks, to the Christmas parade last year. Um, we seem to have an issue in our downtown businesses with their hardship over the PG&E and TUD rate increases. And I know there's been a lot of discussion. And some of them are really concerned that they won't be able to stay in business because between their utilities, their rent, and their trash collection, some of them are paying over $10,000 a month. And when I walked down the street the last couple of weeks, second Saturday was pretty busy. But otherwise, they only have one table of customers, two table of customers, maybe three tables of customers. So I don't know what would happen to Sonora if all of our businesses and their restaurants go out of business. <coughs> we had a pedestrian that was hit a couple weeks ago on Washington Street in the evening, and the car actually ran over her. I saw the tire marks on her leg. It crushed the bones in her foot. Um, and we need to be a lot more mindful of our driving, and we need to make things safer for pedestrians. Once again, I'll just say our trash cans need to be cleaned, especially since there's going to be the parade next week. 
Um, and then our community needs to look at the passage of Prop 36. Um, everybody decided that they were tired of crime, but now we have to decide how we're going to pay for that because the state is at this time not slated to give us any more money. So I would encourage everyone to think about what this would look like for you and communicate with our law enforcement and our community leaders. Thank you. Any further public comment? Okay, a few items to pursue at another time. I will close public comment and we'll move on to presentations. We are going to receive an introduction and swearing in of officer, uh, police officer Ryan Matishok, um, Police Chief Taru Vanderweel. Good evening, Ms. Mayor, Honorable Council. No action required on this item. Uh, it's a privilege and an honor to select future, future generation of policing for the city. Um, the process allows us as a whole to invest in future leaders who will shape the future of policing uh, in our community. And I sincerely hope our newest professional staff, uh, like Ryland here, uh, will find a career in policing as rewarding as I have. So uh, Ryland here tested for the position of police officer in April of 2023 and graduated from the police academy in February of 2024. He successfully completed the field training program and now meets all the requirements to work as a sworn peace officer in California. Ryland moved to Sonora with his family in 2017 and graduated from Sonora High School in 2021. He was hired as a community service officer in 2021 and I immediately recognized uh, he was exceptionally bright and suited for a career in policing. One of the youngest, well, not one of, so the, the youngest um, person I've ever sent through the academy. Uh, he, he was just old enough to attend, uh, and we took that opportunity and, and sent him through. So that's a testament to really um, how bright this young man is and how eager he is and how much promise he shows uh, in this career. So really proud of him. He's been doing great so far, and I expect... Uh, continued excellence from him as we move forward because that's the caliber of person he is. Uh, he is a member of the U.S. Coast Guard where he serves as a maritime law enforcement officer and expects to further his career and education and plans on continuing his studies towards a bachelor's degree. Ryland is dedicated to serving the community and plans to use his skills and experience as a police officer with the Sonora Police Department continue to make a positive impact on the community he calls home. With that, I'll administer the oath. <coughs> your right hand, repeat after me. I state your name. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign, Bear true faith and allegiance. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of California. I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. For purpose of evasion. Nor truly and faithfully. Discharge the duty. Which I'm about to enter. All right. Do you have a badge to be pinned? Now, normally I say, who do you want to pin the badge? And uh, his his family members weren't available. So did he pick the chief of police? <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> did he did he choose his lieutenant or one of his, his uh, <clears throat> leadership uh, down at the police department? No, he did not. He picked his beat partner. And you may recognize him. We swore him in not too long ago. Please do the honor. You can come over here if you want. All right. My pleasure to introduce Officer Ryan Matishak. Thank you all. That's changed, has it? has to jump. Thank you. 
Okay, moving on to the consent calendar. Items on the consent calendar are considered routine and will be voted on in one motion unless a council member or member of the public has a question or wishes to discuss an item. In that case, the item will be removed from the consent calendar and considered separately. Do we have any questions on the consent calendar from the from the council? No. Um, I did have one question for um, Mr. Gorski. Woohoo, Mr. Gorski. Um, could you let us know how often um, we uh, we pay the Tuolumne County Public Power Authority for our power? I was just curious when we I pay that monthly. That's a monthly payment. Wow. Yes. Okay. And could you just tell me who Kennan and Associates are? Um, those are insurance. Wow. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, just <laughs> I, I, you, you give us those things to read there, through, and I read there. through them. So um, yeah. that that was uh, I was curious about those too. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh. Oh yes, I had one about the um, uh, Tyler Somerset. If you could um, uh, let us know about the size of those propane tanks <laughs> uh, and the uh, uh, the parcel numbers that they're, uh, the the gentleman wants to put the propane um, establishment on. No problem, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Um, so the proposal is up to three 30,000 gallon propane tanks. So that's similar in size to some of the ones that you've seen there on Washington. There's actually, he's got a temporary permit. Uh, he's got one on the site currently. And uh, I think in the short term, that's all we would see at that location. Uh, but the approval, um, uh, at least that uh, came through the planning commission was for up to three of those. So um, on South Washington, that those big tanks that are next to um, residences are the size that he's proposing for that. Correct. Okay. You won't, they won't have the visibility of the, the one that's on South Washington because of the nature of the site. So it'll be hidden and there'll be some additional screening that was required by the planning commission. Yeah. Well, presumably uh, all those residents are calm with the, the giant tank. So okay. we got one letter uh, yes, I from I a neighboring, that. but that was, you know, with the 300 foot notice that we gave, that was the only comment letter that we received. And I'm just curious, uh, you said there's a temporary tank there now? <laughs> or it has or a temporary permit to just have the tank stored on the site, but it's not an operating. Gotcha. So yeah. the, the physical tank itself is there. It's just not operating or containing anything as of yet. Correct. Okay. Um, and would you happen to know, like, would, um, is part of the idea of having these along the railway so that they could take delivery by train or so in the short you know term i don't think so but that is not an uncommon model and we do see that uh that um in some cases um but i think as part of um the management plan that was presented to staff uh it will the delivery of uh fuel uh, is not proposed to be via the rail at this point i, I just think it's kind of a shame because it seems like that'd be such a great utilization of our infrastructure that we built there, um, as opposed to trucking it in when you got easy access. So, would it be potentially possible to like encourage that, or you know, to reduce things like you know uh, heavy truck traffic on that road? Seeing as we're just repaving it now, anyways, and kind of was never really designed for heavy industrial loads like that. Or I'm just curious. Yeah, I think we'd have to talk with uh, the rail company to see about their. Uh, willingness and ability to do that. I think what we've got currently is, you know, two parcels that directly adjoin the, mm -hmm. the rail corridor and this property. So I think the the potential seems like it could be there, um, but it, as far as I know, it hasn't been explored at this point. I guess I'll save some more comments for uh, TCTC reports later, just because we've been talking a lot about rail lines and utilizing them more in the future. So uh, just food for thought. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from council? Uh, so um, may I have a motion to accept the consent calendar? Move to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero passes. On to new business. 
um, consider adoption of the City Council Rules and Procedures Handbook. Douglas White, City Attorney. Um, just real quick, um, Mayor, um, I think the best voted two on the last one, so I think it's actually five. Oh, it was, so oh, I just sorry. want to make sure her because she's on online that she gets captured. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Okay. All right. Sorry. Oh, sure Sorry, vote? Beth. Yes. Okay. So it was five zero. Thank you uh, very much. Procedurally, are we required to do a roll call vote if we're doing a hybrid meeting like that? I, I thought we had to do a roll call for if we're, we're having a member in remote. No, they just they just have to state at the beginning of the meeting their reasons for you know not being present. Which in her case it was that she was sick. So it's just that um, she was she was muted. But since I'm on the screen, it's a little bit easier for me to see her mouth moving. <laughs> so I I could see that she voted and wanted to make sure that uh, I, I just want to make sure since she made the effort to to be on even though she's not feeling well that she gets credit for uh, voting. Sure thing. All right. So we, now we see her at the top of the screen. So great. Okay, and wave at us just in case, Beth. <laughs> All right, so um, shall we proceed with the considering the adoption of the City Council Rules and Procedures Handbook? Yes, I will okay. present it. Uh, is that with you, Tracy, or is that yes. with uh, uh, Douglas yeah. White? I will present oh, it. Oh, okay. Honorable Mayor and Council Members, today I'm presenting the updated Council Rules and Procedures Handbook for you to review and discuss. This handbook has been developed using a template that was provided by our attorneys based on best practices from other cities. The goal of this update is to streamline and simplify the existing procedures, making them clear and more efficient, both for council and for staff. And as city clerk, I believe these changes will make uh, my role easier and more efficient in supporting the council's work. The handbook is intended to be a living document, which the council may revisit and amend from time to time. Staff recommends the adoption of this updated handbook as it will mark an important step towards fostering a more organized and efficient local government. City Attorney Doug White is also here today and available to answer any questions you may have about the document or any specific provisions of the document. Thank you. Questions from Council? I remember us going over this quite a while back, so I don't have any questions. Uh, just my only question is this going to replace the uh, portion in our council member handbooks of the same title or yes. is it supplementing it will it will replace it okay um, I noticed um, that uh, the uh, council agenda uh, <laughs> at least in this uh, revised handbook would be due on Wednesdays before the meeting are we are we going to be able to meet that um, Criteria. We always strive for that. <laughs> okay. I just wondered how realistic that was. Um, and then um, I had uh, been on a call with the League of Cities um, and some other um, city council members had wanted to share our handbook. Is that a possibility? Absolutely. I don't think Doug would have any problem with that information being shared and distributed to that network. We love being copied. It, it, it happens. So we'd, we'd like everybody else to be able to take advantage of it. So and um, should we want to amend um, something in the handbook? What is the process? It would be the same process as adoption of a resolution. OK. And would we bring that to a closed session or would we do that in an open session? It would have to be an open session. Right. And I will say just regularly once, if not every other year, um, just because of changes in the law and things like that. I mean, I would I would expect at least every other year at a minimum that you will see updates, if not more frequently. And it may be that you guys work with this. Doc I mean, if you were to approve it, it may be that you work with this document for a little bit and you see some things that you would like to change. And so, you know, maybe we wind up making some changes earlier just based off of your comfort level. Um, I would also say that this document is ultimately intended to be a document that could be used by the other, age, um, you know, uh, boards and commissions that, that uh, you know of the city. So it's so it's for the city council, but the goal is ultimately for it to be a document that can be used by everybody. So we have somewhat standardized rules amongst in, within the city. Yes, I've already printed out the page for meetings, so hopefully we can I can. Keep on uh, 
on regulation. So, okay. Uh, any other questions from council? Uh, really just um, a comment. It, it seems a lot uh, shorter than our previous, uh, this section of our manual, unless I'm miscounting, I didn't get an exact um, page number, but uh, just specifically the section of like communications between council members and staff and just like uh, outlining more Brown Act and uh, decorum like examples. Uh, I just, I think they're like being stripped out from what I could see or they're not, maybe they're addressed, but just not quite in the level of detail that I was used to. So, um, I mean, I'm all for making things more efficient, but it, it certainly helps to have more specific guidelines of like what is and, and isn't allowed, um, just in my own personal opinion. So council member, one of your, one of your things we could do is, um, if you were to adopt it so that this became the new rules, if you want to like look at a comparison just by, you know, between the two different documents, we'd be happy to kind of like show you where they show up in each document. And then you could decide whether or not you'd like to have an agenda item to add some of those items that were in the other version into this one. So, so this is um, a first reading as well. Would I have an opportunity to, to follow up on that with suggestions or? It's, it's, a, it's not an ordinance. So this is a resolution. So, so the, there's only one reading on this one. Um, okay. So if you were to be, you were to vote on it, then it would be basically immediately put in place. But with that being said, it, it's also that easily amended too. So, so what we would just do is if you were to pass it and you have some items that you'd like to be added, that would just be a future agenda item. And if, at that meeting, we would make those proposals and see if it's affected or, or not. Yeah, and uh, just one other question. I, I noticed um, just around the public comment we received back in uh, July regarding, or it might've been June, um, regarding who qualifies for mayor or vice mayor. And I didn't see any language codifying that. Are we still gonna do that as like a handshake, unspoken agreement, or is that something this council wants to address and put in writing? Um, I, I would like to do that, but according to this, we would have to um, put it on the agenda sure. and talk about it at yeah. that point. So I, I, I just bring it up as you know, yeah. previous yeah. discussion items. No, I think it's an important discussion item. And um, after we approve this, then we can um, work on the amendments. Mm -hmm. So um, may I have a motion to ap approve the uh, City Council Rules and Procedures Handbook? I'll move uh, to pu approve. Public okay. comment? Oh, public, public comment. comment. Okay. Sorry, thank you. And it's listed here. So Well, I didn't see this till today and I wasn't here, I guess, when you had your July discussion, but I thought it was a little sloppy and incomplete. So I will be happy to make some suggestions, but I can't do it today but I thought some things were missing that should be there. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, five zero. Um, and I think uh, anyone who has um, items that they would like either amended or added can um, work with um, Melissa to add those to a, an a upcoming agenda. All right, consider approval of the mayor's change of appointment to the Central Sierra Economic Development District. Uh, Tracy Skelly, once again. This uh, staff report is just a, a small change from the original appointments that we made when uh, the new council members came on. Um, so we just ask for your consideration for approving the mayor's change of appointment uh, to the Central Sierra uh, Economic Development District uh, with uh, the mayor and being the, um, uh, the board member and uh, the the primary committee member and Bess Levine being the ultimate alternate. Um, a little background on this. Um, our vice mayor is now um, very, very um, <laughs> uh, busy with uh, uh, our LAFCO, uh, which is in an urgent situation and uh, is now on ad hoc committees. And this is something that she needs to really 
um, dig into and and uh, concentrate on. So I'm lifting this one committee from her and meets four times a year. Uh, it's very interesting committee, so I'm I'm glad to be back on it. But uh, I just wanted you to know that Suzanne is is doing, and all, you also have TCTC. So. Um, Glad to be able to lift a little bit of your um, uh, busyness with this city business. And I humbly thank you. <laughs> it's much appreciated. So may I have a motion to approve the change of appointment? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Okay, we move on to monthly reports. Um, does uh, any of our city staff have additions to their reports? Madam Mayor, I don't really have an addition, but I just wanted to call out one item specifically, uh, which is that um, community development has done a soft launch of our online permitting process. And so we're super excited about that. And we've had a number of permits come in already. Um, Mr. Gorski got us set up with a computer in here in the office itself so we can work with contractors the first time if necessary as they walk themselves through the process, although it is very easy and it's convenient. They can pay online. We get the application. There's no double, you know, entry within having to, um, you know, collect the same information in different spaces. So we're very, very excited about that. We think it'll be a convenience uh, for the community, uh, for our contractors, and for all those doing business with the city. Uh, so please, um, you know, for folks out there who are in the building community, uh, please check it out uh, and uh, let us know what you think. But I think uh, folks are going to be pleased with the convenience yeah. and not having to come down and, oh. and see our smiling faces any longer. <laughs> thank you for thank you for bringing us into 2024. I did um, <clears throat> want to ask you did, uh, did you or Brian go to the housing coalition meeting and was was there any uh, important upshot from that? that so uh, unfortunately we had a little mishap and uh, we both ended up um, missing that but we will be connecting with the housing community again um, as they've had a series of meetings that I've participated with in the past and will be moving forward with yeah. them. Well, I was future. just curious. It was a, sort of an initiative that uh, Supervisor um, Brandon had put together, so I had no idea who showed up and what happened. So yeah. I guess we'll get a future report. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Council reports. Uh, Vice Mayor, would you like to start? All right. So I did attend the Forestry Department's uh, bike trail meeting, and it was really well attended. Uh, they are looking for volunteers to help build trails. Uh, if you'd like to help with that, you can contact benjamin.cossell, C-O-S-S-E-L, at usda.gov. And then finally, a really, really neat thing that I went to on Saturday. I don't know that it was really well uh, um, broadcast or advertised, but Saturday morning, I attended the dedication of the first in the state of California Women's Veterans Memorial. It's now located in Twain Heart. Actually, ABC News was even there to record the moment. There were many well-represented trailblazers there. One woman veteran said, quote, I'm on the Stanislaus County Veterans Advisory Committee and Commission, and I really want to recreate this in Stanislaus County. Another woman veteran, now a minister, read a beautiful passage from the book of Esther, reflecting on the respect and admiration of all women who fight for what is right, quote, and who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such as a time as this. Many in the community know of Frank Smart, his tireless work to honor those who have served and ensured that their sacrifices are never forgotten. He started this work two years ago, and it's been long and challenging, but so rewarding. And when he took the podium, he kind of cried and he said, I didn't get pay, but I did get pay and everyone thanking me for the past two years and the people that I got to meet. And finally, he said, God bless our military members, Tuolumne County and the United States of America. If you would like to buy a brick for your female service member, you can email Frank Smart at fsmart at rocketmail.com. Thank you, Councilmember Merrill. Okay, um, bear with me. 
because I, I got three uh, uh, committee reports to do in uh, the TCTC one, there was a lot. Um, but first and foremost, um, I just wanted to acknowledge, um, as some members of the public did, uh, our district manager for waste management, Jim Garcia, passed away um, due to his battle with cancer recently. So um, memorial service, I believe, uh, is, the, and correct me if I'm wrong, this Saturday at 3? At 23rd. At Terzich Turg yeah. uh, and Wilson. Um, so I just really, I, I, I loved working with Jim. He was a easy guy to get along with, and uh, he will be sorely missed, to say the very least. Um, uh, Dollar Dump Day is coming up. That's uh, November 23rd. Uh, that is for all Tuolumne County residents, not just those of us in the city, so you could bring in a cubic yard of waste, uh, get rid of it for a dollar. Um, and uh, we've got a Clean California grant that will feature um, our new uh, solid waste mascot, Adam the Trash Panda. Um, he's going to be featured on signs throughout Tuolumne County on major through fairs. So like if you're going to Yosemite, there's a good chance you're going to see um, Adam saying, hey, don't trash to all me. Please pick up your trash and stuff like that just to help raise awareness um, to a lot of the uh, uh, non Tuolumne County residents that like to leave their winter, um, you know, sleds and things like that up here. So hopefully we'll be cracking down in uh, a signage way on that. Why did um, they choose a panda? <laughs> well, it was it was um, no, it, it's a it's a it's a raccoon. But I, it, Adam the trash panda. So, okay. um, but yeah, it was a, a community project that a bunch of kids and community members. Um, no, that was actually a, a fun uh, process of, of yeah. choosing that. But um, okay. anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, trash panda, yeah. raccoon. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, um, we are not going to be using, um, I've talked uh, previously about our, I think it's 1,000 ton uh, allotment for uh, municipal waste disposal. We're not going to use that full allocation this year, but um, I think with our new leadership on solid waste, we have good plans to get the most out of it um, going forward in the coming years. And um, if I may mention you by name, Julie, um, you were at president of the Solid Waste Committee, and I think um, that would be a great avenue for us to help mitigate the increase um, to fees with our uh, green waste disposal program to maybe find a way to work within our existing contract to help, um, you know, firewise communities or those, uh, you know, groups of people that would like to come together and help mitigate fuel reduction, um, things like that. So I will follow up on that for sure. Um, and that brings me to TCTC. Um, a lot going on there. Um, it was... I think uh, Laura Shin, she's been a, a longtime consultant with TCTC. She's been with us for eight years. I think that was her last meeting uh, this last uh, Wednesday, it would have been. Um, we were presented with uh, our regional transportation plan for one of the second times uh, opening up our period of public comment. So if you'd like to comment on what TCTC is doing or put your two cents in, um, I think it's open until mid-December or so, until our next um, TCTC meeting, which would be the second Wednesday in December. So please submit your comments. We'd love to hear them. Um, we, sorry, I got a lot to read through here. How's the search going? Oh, for an executive director. Um, it's ongoing. That's all okay. I could really say about it. Um, yeah, we're about to get quite a quite a bit of turnover at TCTC, it seems. But um, having pieces like the regional transportation plan, you know, approved uh, by the time that turnover happens, it really helps a lot for uh, the the new staff. And um, I have heard that Darren is more than happy to come back on a uh, consultation basis as needed to help get the the new executive director up to speed. Um, we were talking; um, some interesting discussion ensued um, about trying to revamp and utilize some of our distended railways, seeing as we have all this government right-of-way strewn throughout all of our county and maybe looking at ways to um, increase public transportation via um, that avenue with maybe, you know, uh, talking to Caltrans, or not Caltrans, uh, Amtrak of building, you know, new railways up here in Yosemite potentially, using them for bike paths, um, winter recreation, the like. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, big news. We have a new fixed route, finally, again, from Sonora to Jamestown, which I think is a really big deal. And I think one of the big crowns in that that was something I've been pushing for for a long time was um, the Atka Food Bank is now an official stop on that route. So you can go all the way from Sierra Village, any of our fixed routes, um, and connect at our transit center and be able to get food if you need it. Um, I'll be working with Atka to make sure that we can package our uh, food. Mm. Uh, properly so it'll create the 
smallest amount of impact on our staff um, and our drivers and stuff like that. So hopefully it'll be self-contained, but um, pretty pumped about that. And you could always use dial a ride if, if that's more convenient for you as well. And uh, just had some good uh, events, provided transportation services to Chicken Ranch Casino's grand opening, which went really well. Um, and TCTC will be once again providing shuttle service for our Christmas parade um, here in Sonora. So that'll be pretty awesome. Um, and finally, uh, I had the Committee on Homelessness uh, last Thursday morning. Um, just a couple quick notes on that. Um, uh, Jason of One Pile at a Time brought up uh, the Miners Motel, which is uh, right on our city limits. Um, the, it's the hotel on, on 108 in between Jamestown and Sonora. And how it um, seems like that project stagnated a bit. Um, seems like it's been broken into by people um, seeking shelter a few times. So that was raised as a uh, concern, hopefully we will get uh, that developed in the future. Um, we've had some pretty great success with um, Camp Justice so far, which is the um, sanctioned uh, camping site uh, over by the Justice Center. Um, according to unofficial data and some of our workers, boots on the ground people there, um, I just wanted to share this because uh, it's a widely perceived uh, myth. I think that a lot of homeless people are from out of the county um, and again, these are unofficial numbers, but these are county officials providing this data, just talking with people who are present at the camps. They would estimate 90% of the people that are currently at Camp Justice have been a Tuolumne County resident for over five years at this point. So depending on you know, how <laughs> long you, you want to say it takes to become a, a local, um, they're not just coming from outside of the county. Um, but more or less, it's been a, a, a pretty uh, solid investment you know there's been uh six people out of like probably hundreds have been trespassed off the property um but since september um 6th 15 people have been stably housed um without case management which is kind of an impressive uh feat to to occur um and we got uh, um we're, we're not turning people away from camp justice but we've been at capacity for a long time so um, still a need for the navigation center, which is open now and has housed some of its first families. But I just think um, until we could get a more robust housing staff up there, it might be difficult to get it to that point, unfortunately. Um, but basically, from what I heard, and including from uh, Chris, our own um, homeless outreach coordinator, he says the 90% statistic is actually pretty, in his words, he said it was dead on, the uh, statistics for out of county versus in county residents. Um, and yeah, that's, I guess I'll just leave it at that. We're, we're kind of, uh, getting our priorities together for 2025. Um, yeah. So our next meeting is December 12th. I'll update, update okay. you then. And, uh, the ATCA fundraiser. Oh yes. Uh, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> um, it's, uh, unfortunately it's too late to be adopted if you are in need this holiday season of a little extra cheer and help receiving gifts. But if you would like to adopt a family and help uh, contribute to making sure that someone has a Merry Christmas. Um, all you need to do is if you go to ATCA, ATCAA.org, um, it should be right at the top of their banner. It says adopt a family. All you need is a first name, last name, email, phone number, and a short message on what you would like to contribute, um, and they will get back to you. It's a great program. Um, I've donated a couple of times myself over the years, and it just makes me feel good to help those that are a little less fortunate than some of us. Tis the season. So, um, Council Member Levine, would you like to speak to us from beyond? Hi. Yeah. Um, sorry. I um, I did go to the Housing Coalition meeting, and I had uh, visit Tuolumne County and Natural Resource Advisory Committee. But I think nothing time sensitive. So I think instead of sniffling and coughing through a report, I'll just save that update for the next meeting, if that's okay. Okay, thank you, and um, I look forward to your report on the Housing Coalition. Definitely, uh, I, I took thorough notes, so I'll I'll have lots to to share next time. Okay, thank you. Do well soon, Bess. Yeah. Um, okay, Council Member Opie. I have a very short one. Uh, I've had no committees uh, since the last meeting. Uh, airport land use meets rarely. I found out, and uh, yes, Council was canceled, which worked out in my favor a little bit, but uh, I didn't have to be late. I was technically <laughs> early because they were meeting. But uh, on top of that, I got Irwin coming up, uh, I believe, next.
next week? Maybe this week? What's today? Monday? Yeah. Oh, yeah it's right. this week. So you guys will hear about that next go around. All right. Well, um, have you driven Hospital Road? You know, I was asked that earlier by Melissa, and I haven't. I saw it torn up, and I was like, oh, yeah, I drove. Oh, wait. No, I haven't. It was all tore up no, when I was going to drive on it. Our pot, as our, our pothole patrol, you better go out there. And, yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know it. Right. I'm curious about the stop sign. Yeah. So, <laughs> update on that. I, I knew the stop signs were coming. So, striping will be done on the 22nd. Um, and then our public works crews, I think, after next week, I hope. But depending on what things look like in parade preparation for them, we'll have the stop signs done. Our crews are doing the stop signs. Right. So, there's a stop sign at the post office? Or uh, where this are these stops? Yeah, at the intersection just above um, the hospital. So I think it's Calaverse. Oh. Oh. Tease into the parking lot. And hmm. then um, we'll put a three way stop right there. Perfect. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you for that discussion. And you'll get to see your policy direction come to life soon. Well, I, I did drive it, and it's very smooth. So. Um, okay, so my report, um, I attended a special LAFCO meeting, and um, our vice mayor is deep into the ramifications of that uh, um, uh, meeting and a uh, ad hoc committee, so we will find out more in December. Um, uh, our, uh, the, our, sorry, blah, 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 our Sonora Chamber. Uh, leader and I did a radio program on Motherload Views for the Christmas Town um, um, parade and uh, for the parade and for our upcoming Christmas Town events and festivities and um, uh, it's going to be a great December. So um, everybody, I think it's broadcasting this week. Everybody listen to what we have to say because uh, we went into detail about all the preparations and. Um, and uh, some of the new events and so the really exciting stuff coming up. Um, I went to the CSE, uh, the Central Sierra uh, Economic Development uh, Board meeting, and they were doing a, um, they approved a youth entrepreneur project for Sierra Jobs First, which will provide education, skill development, and opportunities for youth to connect with and learn from success, successful regional entrepreneurs. I think uh, they're looking at $250,000 grant, maybe going up to a million. Um, it will start out with five entrepreneurs, but my own background is in business, and once you once you have a business degree, it's very helpful in anything else that you do. So I, I think that's a great program. Also, on um, in the middle of our decorating on Sunday, Alex uh, Bloom came by with uh, the um, crew that he has from Cal State Fullerton, who are working on all the data collection for broadband. So we all got to tell them um, how awful broadband is in Tuolumne County, and that uh, that they should, you know, look for ways to improve it. And we also tried to recruit them to move here because they all seem very young and bright. Um, and then um, uh, let's see, anything else to, I had to do here? Uh, I went to the Tuolumne Chamber Gala. Um, our city administrator was uh, nominated as one of the. Uh, county administration officials to be honored and um, the sheriff got the nod but hey we had a strong team there uh, uh, so, and we decorated for Christmas town and also when finally I, I think we all got the town hall meeting notification for the um, Tuolumne County Resource Conservation District and uh, Firewise Communities about um, uh, the grants to clean up Dragoon Gulch, Jamestown Road, and other fuel treatment projects, and that will be happening here at City Hall on December 4th at 5.30 p.m. So um, for more information, uh, info at TuolumneFireSafe.org or info at TCRCD.org. Okay, so no other business. Um, I will adjourn this meeting at... 555. We're, we're going strong. Quite record set. Yes. Can yeah. you say a picture of that?